And you've just heard Love the Twilight Zone from the EP The Twilight Zone by Jack Wakeman and the Dream Striders. And I'm joined by Jack now. Hello, Jack. Hello, sir. So tell us about The Twilight Zone, the EP, and the songs that are on it, because it's interesting. I was listening to it a few times before speaking to you, and it sounds like an EP or an album should sound in that it's got a beginning, a middle, and an end, and we'll hear the end later on. But how do you view it? I think that's... Um, it's interesting to say that. I do think that a collective of work should be of an ilk, and it should have a sort of... Not in a narrative, because not everything should be a concept album. But, yeah. uh, um, I think it should just definitely feel like a thing, like a cohesive, because we've done just singles up to this point, and I always felt like, I, and I always do feel like, that if I'm going to do a larger body of work, whether that's a EP, album, double album, quadruple album, then it has to be of a... <laughs> it has to be of a... Uh, it definitely got, got to be of a thing whatever that is i don't it, it's just got to sound cohesive i think is is the thing i mean that's not a rule that anyone has to stick by but it's certainly a rule that i try and set myself yeah yeah and that's interesting it's, uh, saying album and double album was there any point where you thought this was going to be longer than the five songs it is i've i mean i've got songs i've got plenty of songs so we could have definitely done an album but i just don't feel like we I feel like I'd be putting it out. Uh, I don't out into the world, sort of. I don't want to say with a lot without a large enough audience to appreciate it. But I, I'm terrible at promotion. I'm, te I'm I'm so bad at it. And you know, we're not on a label or anything. So I, I that I think doing an album because mainly to me, albums are really special, and I yeah. think they sort of mark chapters in artists' lives. I, I want to make sure that the first album is at the right time, whenever that is. But it's not yet. I know what you mean, because as you say, you brought out these singles um, and none of them are on the EP, which is great for, you know, you think, oh, it's all new music, which I think is excellent, you know, because a lot of people would have done the video and, oh, that track that we brought out last year, we can put that on. Was it always a decision, you know, these are going to be new songs for people? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, that was that was never not the case. It was going to be four songs. This is how much these things can change sometimes. I because some bits of the music, like the music I had, uh, the music I'd written for Double Vision High Fantasy, the actual instrumental I'd had around for a long time, um, and then a couple of other bits I had around for a little while, but most of it was fairly spontaneous. And then the track, the um, the title track, Love Twilight yeah. Zone, was written in the entirety the day before we went down to the studio. Wow. Then that just set the precedent then to, um, <laughs> it's like, well, this has to be on it and this is going to probably be the title track. And then it was, it was a fun title and it was fun enough for me to think, well, I'll just, that'll be the title of the EP. Oh, that's really interesting. Cause you kind of think, well, I, I kind of thinking, well, the title track was probably the first one you wrote. <laughs> you know, and that kind of thing was underneath the exact opposite of that. Yeah, it was literally. It was actually you like this. Actually, I think um, it was going to be the Witching Hour EP, right? And it was going to be, and it was going to be that as the title track. And then I talked to the band about it and stuff, and we all agreed that maybe that's a bit cheap. But as long as there's a bunch of other songs on it, we might be able to get away with it. Um, but then I said, "Oh, guys, I just wrote this last night. What do you think? Should we put it on?" And they all went, "That's the one." <laughs> Get that on. Get the witching hour off. Get this on instead. That must be hugely satisfying when you present with something that you've just come up with and they all go, yep. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, one of those funny things is like a songwriter or a, I suppose it's any any artist, I suppose, or you're a painter, sculptor, musician or whatever. It always feels like your latest thing, your, yeah. your newest thing is your most special thing because it's, you know, it's all new in your head or whatever. And it's not always the case that it's your best thing, but you know. But it's nice when other people think it's really good as well. That's definitely yeah. like a. Bolsters the ego. Yeah. It was, yeah. In a healthy way. And, and going back to this being a, a, an EP and you've had singles before, have you mm -hmm. got in your mind a kind of strategy, is a horrible word in terms of releasing music, but an approach to releasing music? 
I, so, I, you know, kind of, you know, you said you didn't want to put an album out because the time maybe wasn't right. You maybe yeah. by doing an EP, more people get to know your music, and it's it's done in stages. I've, I've I've always been this kind of slow burner kind of guy, so um I'm in no rush to try and hammer out an album or anything. Um, I don't know if there's a, there's definitely not a set strategy like we we'll do this. You know the whole like whiteboard meeting room. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so I'm, I'm re I really fall down with the sort of the industry side and the promotion side of stuff. I'm I'm genuinely crap. I'm genuinely rubbish at that stuff. Um, so, which is sounds funny, but it's annoying as hell, you know, for everyone. So, as of the new year, we're going to definitely sit down and think about really what will be the next thing and how yeah. we really uh, and pro come up with a proper strategy for it because we just didn't do that, or rather, I didn't do that this time. I just we finished it, we got everything together, and we just said, let's just put it out. Yeah. You know, we did, we have not hired any PR companies. I've not been in touch with any labels or anything. You know, it's so DIY, which is funny because the music doesn't sound DIY. We're not like well, a it punk does not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, we're not a punk band, and we're not you know dressed in fishnets and stuff. Even though I'm sure some of the guys might like that. Um, uh, we are we're very much a DIY outfit without the sort of DIY aesthetic. Yeah, I mean, because the songs, um, I, I mean, people all have heard Love the Twilight Zone there, and I've, I've played other tracks on the show previously. The sound's quite big and it's complex. There's a lot going on in terms of production. It sounds like it should cost a lot of money. <laughs> you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, it, it, that's, that's as a, someone who listens to it, uh, you know, you've got all sorts of different instruments and sounds and, you know, things yeah. going on there. I, I I would definitely put a lot of that down to uh, uh, my own career. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, a guy called Danny Thompson in Liverpool, who's my producer. Right. He's uh, he's worked with all sorts of people. It was when uh, when I was doing stuff with BC Camp Live, uh, Brian introduced me to Danny, and that's how that relationship uh, came about. And then we just we just got on really well, and I feel like Danny gets the best out of me. We're very much a uh, sort of the opposite of what I think studio, what I think people think the studio is like, sort of hammering out and perfectionist. I'm really not a perfectionist. Right. Uh, so we'll do, say, three or four takes of most things and then just go and then say, well, we haven't got it there, we haven't got it. So either scrap the part, rewrite it, um, or just or change, change something up. Uh, but we usually nail it. We usually get it pretty quick. Um, especially instrumentation. I mean, I'm really quick. It, vocals take me a bit longer because I'm not a singer. Right. Vocals are a fairly new discipline to myself in terms of, especially in terms of being like a front man. Um, but in terms of instrumentation, yeah, yeah. And he's always complimented me on my range, arranging sort of abilities. Yeah. Um, you can go too big with a song and then it just turns to mush and you can't really dis distinguish. Yes. Parts. But I, I, I learned a lot from Brian as well. His songs are written fantastically. He's a fantastic composer. So a lot of that's arrangement stuff. Knowing when to hold back. Yeah. It's not like playing and all that stuff, you know, play that now, play that here, keep something back. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And and in a lot of the songs as well, you know, there are you know the music swells at points and then you know goes quieter at other points leading you to kind of listen in more so i think that's right you don't go the full we'll just throw everything yeah. else there's there's you control there. no there's no rules of this stuff you can do like i said if we were some sort of like proto punk band you know all our songs were two minutes and that was the thing but i've just uh i like chords and melody too much to really like it would be so inauthentic of me to hammer out some crazy heavy punk tune, you know. Uh, I've just got too much of that Brian Wilson. Every, the chords have got to be, you yeah. know, interesting and all that stuff. I've got, I've got, it's me being selfish, but I do write for me first off. Yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of important as any, as a, as a creator of anything. You've got to scratch the itch. And um, so I have to be satisfied with the music myself. That, that, that kind of idea that um, if you don't do it for yourself, then actually the audience won't benefit anyway because it's got to mean something to you and, and, and you know, be authentic, as you say. 
I think there's there is something in that. I, I watched a video Rick Rubin talking something like that, and then an interview with Tarantino when he's saying he only makes films for himself. He thinks what film what film do I want to watch, and then yeah. he'll make that. But and I really really relate to that. I got into music or started making music because I thought that there were songs that I could hear that didn't exist. So I wanted to make that just even for myself. Yeah. So how do you, um, oh, how did the band come together? Tell us about the Dream Striders. How did it all come together? Uh, the Dream Striders is a fascinating collection of uh, local chaps. So when I first moved to, oh, this is actually, I'll tell you a funny story. When I first moved to Glasgow, it was uh, August 2020. So it was yeah. the worst possible time in all of human history to move anywhere. <laughs> and my next door neighbour, uh, we got chatting and stuff over the fence or whatever. And she was convinced for the first six months that I was in like witness protection or something <laughs> because she could not believe that uh, someone could be so stupid as to move city during a pandemic. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I, I sort of quickly put a sort of cu couple of sort of news things out on like a couple of Facebook groups, sort of like local musicians. Yeah. And I had friends in Manchester that knew people up here that could put me in touch with, you know, every, how everything's a sort of spider web. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just got a couple of really enthusiastic, enthusiastic replies. I put a link to a couple of demos and stuff, like the Witching Hour and whatever. And yeah, just a couple of guys. Uh, so there's two Callums in the band. Callum Edwards, who plays drums. Um, he runs a studio called Brookwood, and he plays with the Chili Pipers sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And a guy called Callum Shanks, who has his own band called Ballistics. Uh, he plays guitar for me. A guy called Lenny, who plays acoustic. Uh, a guy called Nesta, who plays synthesizer. And a guy called Axel, who plays the sort of keyboard piano bits and it sort of formed over time. it's we've had a couple of iterations of it right. stuff people sort of come and gone whatever um because people move away or you know sure split with your girlfriend and stuff and then just, uh yeah but uh, yeah it's great uh, brian gave me this great advice when i was in bc he gave me this great piece of advice he said getting a band together is three things it's getting a, a decent player most people are pretty good, so that's fine. Someone that's just really into the music, and then someone that's just like not weird and super chilled out and stuff. Yeah. And I feel really lucky because I'm definitely the maddest in the group. <laughs> so, like, you know, they all, they, I feel like they just all put up with me because they've had, because <laughs> they have to. <laughs> you know? um, but they're they're a great bunch of guys, and um, I'm hoping to get them more involved with stuff next year because I feel like when I look at my socials and stuff, it's all just like me, and I'm not actually that fond of that. You know, I want to yeah. get the guys involved and stuff. So that's something we'll be definitely hoping to do next year. And, but everyone's doing it as well, so it's a bit yeah, fun. sure, yeah, they've got their own other things on the go as well. But what about playing these songs live? Are you going to take? You're going to be doing live gigs with them? So I mean. By the time this goes out, we'll have just played McCule's on the 15th, and it went really well. Oh, my God, it was oh, a sellout. Yeah, it was a great night. <laughs> you should have been there. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, we've been prepping away. So, like like I said, Callum Edwards, the drummer, he has a studio just near um, Anderston, Anderson yeah. outstation, just near there. He's got a little studio. So we've been in there for a few evenings preparing, getting everything together and stuff. It's one of those funny things where... It obviously sounds different live, and I like that because yeah. I wouldn't want—I don't like the whole. It's got to be a perfect recreation live because just go listen to the record if that's what you want to do. Yeah. You know, sort of amp it up a bit, and it's actually actually a bit heavier live. I think there's there's a few more fuzz pedals on the floor, and you know, there's a put a bit of a show on, and um, we've got a Moog synthesizer that's just the loudest thing on earth. So that's yeah, that's great. But yeah, now in terms of it live. I don't know, it's, um, it's just a little... There's a lot of moving parts, so we've got to rehearse fairly regularly, but um, yeah. I'm actually quite lazy with rehearsals. I don't enjoy rehearsing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'd much rather be in the boozer or something, but uh, no, we've been, we've been slaving away 
in the rehearsal room getting it all together and stuff. So it'll be it'll be a show. Yeah. Or it has been a show. Has been a show <laughs> and what a great venue it was. For yeah. The- <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I really. But I've been there. I've played there a few times with other people, and I, uh, I've been to see enough gigs there. And we'd done Sleazy's back in May, I think it was, or something like that, right. back in spring. And that was great. And I was sort of thinking of venues that are a similar size, and stuff like that. And someone mentioned McKeels to me. And I thought, oh, light bulb, of course. Yeah. Right. The sort of the, the cavern. Kind of vibe of it. There's a little backstage. I thought, oh, it's perfect. It's such a good idea. So, I'm I'm interested in musical influences because you mentioned uh, Brian Wilson there, and there's definitely what I would call kind of classic pop influences, pop and rock influences in your music. So, could you chat a little bit about those? Or yeah, sure, man. Uh, I think I f- I feel like I've got this mad kind of varied. Um. Influences are all over the board, but I, but I've, as I'm sure we'll get onto, uh, I've got a prog rock background. I come from, I come from the prog rock thing. Uh, my parents have sort of, it, it, this is really interesting. I, I'm trying to sort of squeeze the information down to making it simple, but my parents have very sort of, well, it's going to sound mean, but they've got sort of a very basic taste. Right. Like so, like growing up, and my dad had like either IB for classics on or like James Blunt in the car or something. But my grandparents um, have uh, interesting taste. So my grandma was into like Zeppelin and Sabbath and stuff like that, and then my granddad is into ELO, Beatles, um, Sam the Garfunkel. So that stuff, the '60s stuff, was always getting played. Right. So I sorry, should say. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up. Right. Uh, and my granddad plays a bit of guitar. Um, so that stuff was always around. So I think there's got to be a thing there. But then when I was 17, I just really got into Pink Floyd. Right. That was like a that was such a big thing for me. Uh, I had all my friends in school were really into stuff like Green Day, Metallica. Mm-hmm. I just hated it. <laughs> they're not bad bands I don't, I don't you know yeah 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 it just wasn't for me and you know? I just felt like really um outside of all the guitar music that was happening at the time when I was growing up in Doncaster and then I don't know how I, I don't know how I got onto it in the first place I've got no idea but I must have borrowed Dark Side of the Moon from someone or someone had a copy line around and I thought you know the album cover the famous you know yeah sure uh, what's that Oh, you like that? Go and, go and listen to it, and it turned completely sort of opened my mind as to what music could be. You know, instead of just the sort of like three minute pop song. So it's weird. Now it's sort of but it's almost come full circle. Prog, prog or sort of experimental music yeah. was my punk because it yeah. felt rebellious. It wasn't this sort of three minute, really basic thing. You know. Didn't have to, and it didn't sound like the stuff in the charts because I've, I've never liked the the charts, and I think they're more irrelevant now more than ever. Yeah, I think so. In my personal opinion, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's it's interesting you mentioned ELO because when I first heard your music, I thought there was some kind of ELO going on there as well. Definitely yeah. some Floyd, that kind of melody, but also a willing to play with what was going on in the music. You know, like different sounds, different a. Uh, um, a different, just sounding very different to what else is out there. That's what I've thought about your music from the start. Is that it doesn't really sound like what anyone else is doing at the moment. Is that would you agree with that? Yeah, no. I, I mean, I don't. I don't feel like, and this is a fault of mine. I don't listen to enough contemporary music to really know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but, well, I, I, but I do, and I'll tell you, there's not a lot that sounds like Jack Waitman in the Gene Strider. But, this is <laughs> no, but I think you know. It's a, it, I, I take that as a massive compliment. And uh, it is a massive compliment. It really is. No, thank you very much. Uh, but I, I, I don't try to be out there. It just sort of just happens. <laughs> I just know the sounds that I like, and I just sort of go along with that. Like the, the Jeff Lynne thing was quite a big thing for me. I really got into ALL, and some people hate them, which I find <laughs> really funny. But. Um, He's got this whole thing with acoustic guitars, 
where he'll have like four false strings. A bit like the Phil, Phil Spectre thing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but a bit better, I think. Um, but he's got all these like 12 strings just going and that. And, and he, and that's just a texture that I absolutely adore. And I use in my music all the time. I've got a 12 string here and I just, I, I'll, we'll do like four or five in the studio. And then it creates this amazing sort of, bed of sound rather than a wall of sound where it's hitting you it's sort of it's it's a bed rather than a wall i like to think you can lie on it you know <laughs> and then uh in terms of like electric guitar i mean dave gilmore was obviously a big thing but guitarists like andy summers and johnny uh johnny marr from the smiths would be massive for me that sort of really jangly chorus sound combined with the 70s big acoustic sound elo that and i think then guitar wise you definitely start to get a what I'm about, I suppose. Yeah. That's a much more silly. Textures, texture was the word I couldn't come up with. That's the thing. There does seems to be layers and textures in your music, which make it, for me, really, really uh, interesting. Mm. And uh, and what was it? So Pog's an interesting thing, because I think that's even coming back in itself. There is, there seems to be a kind of, um, often it's linked with folk music, but that willingness to do more complex and even simply longer songs than maybe the classic three or four minute song. Yeah, totally. I. It's funny. I've, I'm sort of. I'm at a funny point with the with song length now, where I used to write really long songs, especially in my early twenties when I wasn't releasing music, but I was writing stuff for myself. I try and write these ten minute, fifteen minute songs, and they were always rubbish. So now at a point where I think how condensed can I make it that's where I'm sort of my headspace is at now but without it being uh, without it taking away from the music like how how much can I boil down this idea to its core um, rather than trying to flesh it out I feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of writers flesh out ideas rather than chop bits of them off you know mm -hmm. and that I want to get to the sort of yoke of the idea rather than add to it and I was looking at the, the artwork for all your releases, and it's it's quite striking. Is it the same person that's done all your artwork? Uh, who I'm trying to take you through everyone? Uh, there was a guy called Nicholas. What's his name? Uh, Nicholas Delap, who did the Visions cover. He does stuff with Ash Nico, so he does really out there sort of three D stuff. Then Cosmic Fear was done by my friend uh, Ren Richardson in Manchester, who's just an illustrator. She's great. Then, um, feel again. Time artwork was a, it was a still from the video. Okay. That my girlfriend at the time called Beth Reed did like a sort of illustrated version of, which was lovely. And then, um, ah, oh, can't remember that. I think Alex, a guy called Alex in Liverpool, did the Witch Now cover. And now I've landed on this guy called Emilio who did the this latest cover, and he did some stuff like. Um, this t-shirt design which we're going to sell or have been selling at the gig rather well. yes so and he he's great man he just totally gets it yeah um, but i i've just always had a thing about illustration i think it's just been a sort of growing up watching a lot of cartoons and stuff i just i'd rather i just like i think album artwork or whatever is a fantastic opportunity to give someone else a platform yeah um, whether that's a photographer or a uh, um, artist or whatever, I just think that's really important. And sort of like a you scratch my back, scratch yours, and all that stuff. I get quite a lot from industry that I should use more photos, but I, I just don't know. I, I've, I like the ambiguity of not being on the covers. Yeah, I don't know if that's sort of the Pink Floyd thing, um, but I quite like that. And unless I get a really strong idea for photo, I'll pro I'll do illustration every time. I just yeah. I like illustration. I think drawing is very immediate, and people sort of get it because they can. Like a photo, like a photo can look amazing. You can use all sorts of tools to sure. obscure a photo. It look cool, filters or whatever. But like a drawing has to be good. Yeah, and, uh, and I think I think you it can, really. You it, it really suits the music as well because you know there's a lot going on certainly in the cover of the EP you know for you to kind of take in. Yeah, I, I gave him quite a loose brief. I said just make it sort of 
a bit 60s, a bit trippy, a bit sort of psychedelic. Uh, there's five songs, so maybe I have like five themes on it. Um, I decided for the Twilight Zone, so the the spiral thing from the old TV show and all that yep. stuff. And you just came back with that, and I said, great, right, love it, you can see yep. it. Let's 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 roll with it. No? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I advise people who have just heard the EP to go and check out the artwork because it's really interesting. Hmm. And Jack, finally, yeah. what are your plans for twenty twenty four? Do you have? You said you're going to get together and maybe hatch future plans. Is that that's the first thing? The only thing I can promise is we're not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> we're not disappearing. Uh, you will hear more of us. We'll do another EP next yeah. year. Right. Um, and because we've got a rough idea of what songs we'll put on, we just need to book some studio time, go down to Liverpool and start doing that. Um, but yeah, so at the start of the year, we're going to have a sort of not redirection, but we're going to get, like I said earlier, we're going to really try and come up with like a proper game plan and stuff um, and take the industry side of it a little bit more serious. Uh, I think might be the plan and get the whiteboard out and the whiteboard <laughs> pens and rubbish. Yeah. You know, really yeah, try absolutely. Make, make sure that you can wipe the pen off. I've made that mistake on whiteboards before. I've done that, you know. I've done that on those, uh, like the, the sharp screens, you know, they have in schools and stuff. Wrote yeah. it on a big, big marker pen, uh, permanent marker. Oh. <laughs> exactly <laughs> the case I pulled as well, yeah. <laughs> Jack, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much for taking the time to do so. Much. All the best. And this is... Jack Wakeman and the Dream Striders and Double Vision Hyper Fantasy.